hey, this is you know, this was sponsored by this organization. You got to snowball it that way. The students at Missouri State who do Skepticon each year um, are a wonderful example. They're in the middle of the Bible Belt. They put on a free conference, like free, and they get enough funding to bring in. Last year, I was there with DJ Grophy, with Vic Stanger, um, uh, good old Vic, Joe Nickel, just a really wonderful. Um, group of people and yeah, absolutely free and, and they do it by hard work by sticking it to the school and insisting that this is needed that the community wants it and that pays off because it was a packed audience yeah we, we've got we've got you know a hundred members in, in our organization and, and a couple of dozen active eager members who are all saying you know, we, we kind of we want to do things but we don't really have a lot of, you know, we do a lot of events, but we don't have enough to get everybody that, that seems to be active and, and involved. You know, one of the things we're kind of trying to think about is how could we get into, um, like, the, the, the high school system, or the public school system here in some kind of a context of getting enthusiasm about science or about critical thinking, you know, enthusiasm about these things into kids that are in the high schools. Have you guys done anything at all with kind of getting the... the you're just promoting, I know, you, I know you guys promote science news a lot and science right. education. You guys do a lot of coverage of stuff that's going on in different school boards around the country. Have you ever been able to get actively involved with any local school district to, to say, like, we want to kind of, we want to get in and help influence what's going on ourselves, not just in policy, but we'd like to offer us, ourselves, or people we know as a resource to local schools to help these issues that you know, I think we can all agree the, the education about you know, science and critical thinking isn't really cutting it right now. Maybe, yeah. Evan, you can talk about five by five. I mean, that certainly fills a need. Oh, it <clears throat> sure does. I mean, uh, our other podcast, our com companion podcast, Five by Five, is just a five minute podcast in which we focus on one skeptical subject. And it's used uh, quite often in classroom settings. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the perfect little focus for uh, any given. Science class, philosophy class, and so forth. Yeah, we optimize it for the classroom. Absolutely, definitely. So, yeah, we've found sort of a niche in providing that for uh, for okay. classes. That's but Drew, you're you're talking about um, you're talking about something a lot more specific. I mean, you're, specific you're, for us because yeah. you know, we're we're a group of students. We're all students. You know, there's yeah. a broad range. We've got we've got a 15 year old film student. We've got a lot of 18 to 20 year old undergrads, and we've got a, a lot of, of grad students that are you know married and have a house and right. you know, and have moved on. But we're all students and all interested in education on some level. But what so, you described is really that's high end activism. I mean, you want to go into a school district. You want to petition the the school board of that town to. You know whether it's a policy change or you well, want to the, actually... the school board or even just a local teacher or, or a local you know a local administrator you know e even on that level of just a teacher has yeah. a lot of freedom to bring in resources that, that they see and even if we can't say you know we're going to get a lot of pull this student organization of 100 so far we're not going to get a lot of pull with the with the school board for you know Las Vegas or Clark County School District but we could we all know teachers you know we, right. we have. Yeah. We have probably four dozen teachers in the district, high school teachers, that we know that, that we could potentially give and help with resources. Well, that's why I brought up Five by Five, because the nice thing about having a podcast that has a huge listener base is that we get people actively writing into us and saying things like, I'm a teacher, help me. And, you know, our full podcast is way too long and way too um, adult <laughs> right. for, um, for, for children, uh, for teenagers even, um, in a classroom setting. And so, you know, we don't have the time, unfortunately. That's just not what we do. We can't go school to school and say, let us help you, let us put on, you know, talk to Richard Saunders about mystery investigators. They go school to school demonstrating science and, um, and debunking sort of right. techniques for kids. That's not us, we don't have time to do that. What we can do is what we do best, which is do podcasts. And so those are the research source that we provide. Yeah, that's a good example of the fact that there's, there's more to do than, in, than any one group can do. So find the thing that's not being done in your region and do it. Although, you know, I, I would say what we, what we have done as, as the Nest, if not as our podca podcast, is um, I think it was more than 10 years ago, we gave our first seminar to uh, the Central Connecticut State University science teachers program. So they're teaching science teachers how to be science teachers. Mm -hmm. And we give a seminar on critical thinking and skepticism. And it actually, 
um, every two years I'd get, because they have two year, it's a two year program. So basically the, every class since then I've given basically the same seminar. So that's a good way just to, to get science teachers enthusiastic about skepticism and critical thinking, you know, training the, those teachers who are then going to go out there and, and teach it. So that's, you know, that's a, an opportunity that was available to us and that's what we did. You'd be surprised at how this is yeah. new information to these science right. per teachers, right. these professionals. They, they, they haven't had this exposure to a lot of these topics that you know we, right. we tackle regularly. And I, they're, they're relatively grateful for And they love the it, chance. yeah. Oh, they love it. And they're also, I mean, teachers are happy to have you do their work for them, right? So <laughs> if, you provide, if you provide a resource, and we also we get questions all the time, hey, I'm a teacher, I want to teach critical thinking. What resources are there for the classroom? So, you know, we'll send them what resources are there, but I'll, there needs to be a lot more. Yeah. Right? And, and there's definitely room for, a, for people who want to be activists who are looking for things to do that, where, where there's an unfilled need. Developing course material or projects or things that science teachers can download off the internet and use in the classroom. Yeah, we're doing a podcast, so that's what we do well. But there's lots of other kinds of resources they would like to have. You know, Drew, you should, uh, you know, if you're going to move forward with that type of activism, you should map out like what you do and how you do it and what works, and then you should write a paper on that yep. and yeah. present it, present yeah. it to the skeptical community and say, we didn't know what to do. We if tried you all these paper, if you Yeah, like I, I would, I would make that like the end goal of that project should be this is how mm -hmm. you can do it in other places, you know. And there have been teachers who have done papers that yeah. tell oh, yes. about it, but yeah, every time we get that question, I always say, please start a blog collective like Skeptic. I would love to see something like Skeptic that's just all teachers blogging about their courses and exchanging ideas. Mm -hmm. And I don't see anything like that out there right now. And I think a right. big problem is just, you know, people don't have the time. Right. But yeah. the, seriously, anybody listening to this, the second you do this, tell me and I will promote the hell out right. of it. Right. What, what about some of the big projects we've talked about in the past, like having a, like a, a national or even you know, multinational digital textbook Repository for schools that they could they could go online and they could download course material, basically textbooks mm -hmm. that are updated, you know, to the day, to the minute, completely updated. You could avoid all this, you know, all this crazy creationism that they're trying to insert and in, in banners and and little stickers on books. You can get rid of all that and just download yeah. right, just right. The science material that's been written by by scientists that they can just download up to date, you know, for very little cost. We talked about that. We, we don't have the time to do anything like that. We I mean, that, that, that's slowly evolving. That's happening. It is. People but, are doing it spontaneously but, and, and right. no, not in a systematic way. It so needs it's a just push. A, it needs it's a, a bit more of people working on that, the yeah. better. Yeah, like I, it would be cool for, so, for a teacher, like a seventh grade teacher, to go and say, I'm a seventh, I'm a seventh grade science teacher. And these are the courses that I teach. And be able to get yeah. course material for the year and, and help yeah. guide them. Like, it's, you know, it's all in there, but see, again, it's not systematic. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's there, but. We're not the only groups that are doing that, right. and you know, and, and you you hear you know the Texas School Board, for instance, talked about you know what did they say a three-year goal of completely eliminating physical textbooks, mm -hmm. and they were talking about it in the context of having textbooks that you know um, that talked about creationism. Yes. They gave intelligent design equal time. You know, they right. they were talking about you know eliminating. You know, they just completely changed history in, in all their history right. courses. So we're not the only active you know organizations that are that are trying to do that. You know, and, and in the same sense that it would make it easier for us to give those materials to teachers that, that wanted it, right. they have, you know, the, the other, other teachers have the same access to. That's always going to be the, the problem right. when you're talking about open access and free exchange of ideas. It's just something we're yeah. going to have to accept is that our ideas are going to have to compete in a much more aggressive way with the crazy people's ideas. Because yeah. it can't help for, for us to be the first one to do it. That would be ideal. That, that brings up an interesting question, though. I think it was just a couple of weeks ago on your on a podcast. You guys talked about how how people respond to new information, whether they hear it from an official science source or whether they hear it 